this deep dive, um, well, it has me pretty intrigued. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're exploring, you know, excerpts from the dynamics of hyperspace. This 1983 conversation with Terrence McKenna and Ralph Abraham. Yeah, that's a good one. McKenna, this explorer of consciousness, and Abraham, the mathematician, both talking about hyperspace. <laughs> I, I'm hooked already. Mm. What exactly did McKenna mean when he said hyperspace goes beyond, like, our traditional maps of consciousness? Well, it's fascinating, isn't it? You see, McKenna felt that those classic models of the mind, like what Freud or Jung proposed, they're helpful, but they only go so far. He argued that they were initially validated by experiences with LSD. Right. When you start considering the truly unusual, those intense DMT trips, yeah. those models, they fall short. So he's talking about those experiences that seem to bypass individual psychology completely, right? Exactly. Experiences that feel more objective, like right. tapping into a universal truth, even though they don't fit our normal understanding of reality. Imagine having a DMT experience that mirrors a mathematician's visualization of higher dimensions. It makes you question everything you thought you knew about what's real. It's like those old maps helped us get our bearings. But now we're in uncharted territory, needing new ways to even discuss what we're finding. Yeah. How did McKenna and Abraham propose we even begin to talk about something like that? Well, they stressed the need for new metaphors. Okay. Our language is so rooted in this everyday three-dimensional existence that it struggles to grasp the complexities of hyperspace. It's like trying to describe a color to someone who's been blind since birth, right? Exactly. McKenna used this great analogy of everything dancing to describe hyperspace, you know. He's hinting at its interactive, interconnected nature, a stark contrast to our linear perception of reality. Think of it this way. In our day-to-day -day lives, we experience things sequentially. Right. But in hyperspace, everything is connected and in constant motion. Our language struggles to convey that. So how do we move past these limitations? McKenna and Abraham believed we need to borrow from various fields, mathematics, art, even personal subjective experience to create a new shared understanding. Uh, if he... we can't rely on our current language, we have to build a new one. Okay, so we're starting to get a sense of what hyperspace might be, but it's still pretty vague. Yeah. Then McKenna throws in this idea of an overmind. Right. What exactly was he getting at there? McKenna proposes this fascinating and somewhat radical idea of an overmind, a higher intelligence that's guiding humanity's evolution, even history itself. So it's not just about our personal experiences in hyperspace. It's about this force influencing the development of our entire species. Precisely. McKenna believed this overmind is behind major breakthroughs. Uh, he used the rapid advancement of computers as one example, suggesting we're being pushed toward a specific destiny. And he used the comparison to other primates and how much faster we've developed as a species. Right. He suggests there's something guiding us toward a higher level of consciousness. This is where it gets really interesting, almost unsettling. McKenna then links hyperspace to eschatology, the idea of an end of history. Right. We're not just talking about altered states anymore, but the potential unraveling of reality as we know it. What did he mean by that, and how does hyperspace fit in? Well, McKenna wasn't suggesting a doomsday scenario, but rather a profound transformation. He viewed history as a buildup, a shockwave, leading to a pivotal shift in consciousness. He even used the Mayan calendar and its 2012 endpoint as an example, not to endorse specific prophecies, but to illustrate how these cultural ideas might reflect real changes in how we perceive reality. So eschatology in this context is less about a literal end and more about a fundamental change in our understanding of time and existence. Exactly. He saw these eschatological ideas as potential signposts on the road towards a higher state of being. Wow. Okay. That's a lot to process. Then McKenna takes things in an even more unexpected direction, suggesting that psilocybin, the psychoactive component in magic mushrooms, could be a form of extraterrestrial communication. Wow. Extraterrestrial mushrooms. I have to admit, this is where my skepticism kicks in a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. A little bit, yeah. I can see that. For yeah. sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, of course. Understandable. Uh, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I got it. Yeah. Yeah, for I sure. I totally get it. Okay, yeah, yeah, for sure. Totally. Okay. Totally. For sure. McKenna imagined advanced beings seeding planets with psychoactive compounds, waiting for intelligent life to evolve and decode the messages within them. So, like cosmic breadcrumbs leading us to a higher truth. That's one way to put it. He was particularly intrigued by psilocybin's unique chemical structure, uh, the fact that it's the only known naturally occurring 4-hydroxylated indole. Now, 
I'll admit, my chemistry is a bit rusty. What does that actually mean, and why did it matter so much to McKenna? In simple terms, it means psilocybin's chemical makeup is incredibly specific and rare. It's like finding a unique artifact that doesn't seem to belong to any known civilization. Right. This rarity, almost like a chemical fingerprint, is what led McKenna to question its origins. Could something so unique have evolved here on Earth through conventional means, or was there a more extraterrestrial influence at play? So instead of a message in a bottle, we have a message in a mushroom. Precisely. And like a message in a bottle, McKenna wondered who sent it and what they might be trying to tell us. It's a truly mind-bending idea, isn't it? This concept of receiving a message through a mushroom. It speaks to the very heart of McKenna's fascination with language and its limitations. He argued that because our language is so firmly rooted in our everyday three-dimensional reality, it simply lacks the capacity to adequately describe these other realms of existence. He pointed to poetry as one potential avenue for expression. But even then, he acknowledged that words often fail to capture the true essence of these altered states. So how do we even begin to bridge that gap? If words aren't enough, what are we left with? Well, McKenna pointed to the visual realm as an example, you know? Where? Comparing certain DMT visuals to the mathematical visualizations of higher dimensions created by mathematicians like Tom Banchoff. It wasn't that he thought he was having precognitive visions of these mathematical concepts. Right. Instead, he wondered if, in a way, Banchoff's films were a precognitive expression of a DMT experience he had yet to have. Wow. It played into this idea that time, as we understand it, might not be a factor in hyperspace. Okay, that's a really interesting way to think about it. So we're not just dealing with a linguistic barrier, but potentially a perceptual one as well. Right. This begs the question, if our language and perception are inadequate, what does that mean for our understanding of reality itself? That's the crux of it, isn't it? McKenna argued that this hyperspace, this realm beyond our normal perception, isn't actually separate from us at all. It's not some distant dimension we need to travel to. It's here, interwoven with our reality, all around us, all the time. Yeah. We're just not equipped to perceive it directly. We're like radios that can only tune into a limited range of frequencies. Right. Oblivious to the vast spectrum of signals existing beyond our awareness. That's a great analogy. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that brings us to what I find to be a truly pivotal question. Why? Mm. If these realms, these experiences, are real and accessible, why would they be there in the first place? What's the purpose? It's the age-old question, isn't it? What is the meaning of all of this? And if this overmind is as powerful and influential as McKenna suggests, why not just reveal itself directly? McKenna wrestled with these questions constantly. He suggested that maybe it's not about being given the answers on a silver platter but rather about learning to ask the right questions. Perhaps these altered states are less about receiving a download of knowledge and more about breaking free from our limited ways of thinking. So instead of being handed a cosmic instruction manual, it's about learning to read the language of the universe itself. Precisely. And that learning process, that exploration, is where the true value lies. He believed these experiences could help us see the world with fresh eyes, to glimpse the underlying patterns and connections that shape our reality. So it's less about passive observation, more about active participation in the ongoing evolution of consciousness itself. Exactly. And this is where, for all the outlandish theories, McKenna's ideas resonate with some ancient wisdom traditions. He often talked about the need to exteriorize the soul. Now, while it might sound a bit esoteric, right. it echoes the core principles of practices like meditation and mindfulness, becoming aware of the observer, the silent witness behind our thoughts and perceptions. So in a sense, Exploring hyperspace is about more than just having extraordinary experiences. Yeah. It's about understanding the very nature of experience itself. Absolutely. And that understanding, that shift in perspective, can have profound implications for how we live our lives and interact with the world around us. Okay, I'm really starting to see the depth of what McKenna was getting at here. It's not just about taking psychedelics and seeing cool visuals. It's about using those experiences as a springboard to a deeper understanding of ourselves in the universe we inhabit. Exactly. And this is where McKenna, for all his talk of higher intelligences and cosmic conspiracies, brings it back to a very personal, even practical level. So how do we connect these mind-blowing concepts to our everyday lives? Where do we even begin to integrate these ideas into our understanding of the world? Well, for McKenna, it always came back to the idea of consciousness. He saw it as the fundamental force shaping reality. And while he believed that psychedelics could offer a glimpse into these expanded states of awareness, he also acknowledged that they weren't a shortcut to enlightenment. 
The real work, he argued, happens after the experience when we begin to integrate those insights into our everyday lives. So it's about bridging that gap between our inner and outer worlds, between the extraordinary experiences we might have in altered states and the reality we experience on a daily basis. Precisely. And this brings us back to the overmind, this guiding intelligence that McKenna believed is orchestrating the whole show. Okay, so if this overmind is really calling the shots, how do we tap into that? How do we align ourselves with this force that McKenna seems to think holds the key to our evolution? It's a question that fascinated him throughout his life. He suggested that we need to move beyond our identification with our physical bodies and our ego-driven desires. Yeah. Easier said than done, right? Oh, absolutely. But if we could somehow break free from those limitations, what did McKenna believe was possible? Yeah. What did he see as the ultimate potential of tapping into this overmind? He believed it would allow us to tap into a wellspring of wisdom and creativity to access a higher level of functioning, both individually and as a species. He even went so far as to suggest that psilocybin, the psychoactive compound in magic mushrooms, might be a message from a more advanced species designed to nudge us in that direction. Wait, so the extraterrestrial mushrooms are back? Yeah. This is where I have to admit I need a bit more convincing. Right. What evidence did he have to support such a bold claim? It's certainly a wild theory. McKenna argued that the very existence of psilocybin, with its unique chemical structure and its ability to induce such profound alterations in consciousness, was evidence enough. He pointed out that it's the only 4-hydroxylated indole found in nature. I'll be honest, my chemistry knowledge is a bit rusty. Could you unpack that for me? Why is that significant? Essentially, it means that psilocybin's chemical makeup is incredibly specific and rare. It's like finding a unique artifact that doesn't seem to belong to any known civilization. Mm -hmm. This rarity led McKenna to question whether it might have originated from somewhere beyond our planet. So instead of a message in a bottle, we have a message in a mushroom. Right. A cosmic care package, perhaps? He suggests these advanced beings might have intentionally seeded planets across the galaxy with psilocybin containing fungi, knowing that intelligent life would eventually evolve and discover these, shall we say, gifts. He often talked about the incredible durability of spores, how they can potentially drift through the vastness of space for millennia and still remain viable. He even drew parallels to how life on Earth can spread to isolated islands through things like wind and ocean currents. It's definitely a Fascinating, albeit highly speculative theory. But if psilocybin is a message, what is it trying to tell us? What did McKenna believe was the ultimate meaning behind these experiences? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? And it's one that he dedicated his life to exploring. McKenna believed that these experiences, while deeply personal, pointed towards a universal truth that reality is far more fluid and interconnected than we often perceive it to be. He saw them as glimpses into the mind of the universe, offering clues about our place in the grand scheme of things. There's a lot to wrap our heads around. We're talking about altered states of consciousness, the evolution of humanity, extraterrestrial intelligence. It's like something out of a science fiction novel. And yet, at the heart of it all, McKenna was really just asking us to consider the possibility that there might be more to reality than meets the eye. So where do we go from here? How do we take these big abstract ideas and apply them to our lives? It starts with curiosity with questioning our assumptions about the nature of reality and our place within it, and perhaps with a willingness to explore the unknown, even if it means venturing beyond the familiar confines of our everyday perception. Yeah, it's like we're being asked to trade in our old maps for a compass mm -hmm. and, uh, and a thirst for adventure. Right. Yeah, it's both exhilarating and a little terrifying, isn't it? It certainly challenges our usual ways of navigating the world. Yeah. If we circle back to this idea of hyperspace as this unseen realm of information and our brains as receivers, yeah. what did McKenna think was the role of psychedelics in all of this? Yeah. Were they like ships venturing out into the unknown? McKenna describes psychedelics as acting like flares, you know, briefly illuminating the hidden landscape of hyperspace. Okay. They allow us to catch these fleeting glimpses of something vast and mysterious, but it's up to us to make sense of what we see. But if this hyperspace, this overmind, is supposedly guiding everything. Mm. Why not just give us the full picture? Why communicate in these like cryptic messages and strange experiences? Ah, uh, the age old question of why mystery even exists. Right. McKenna proposed that maybe it's not about instant downloads of knowledge, but about expanding our capacity for understanding. He believed these altered states, they help us to break free from our habitual ways of thinking, to see the one with fresh eyes and a newfound sense of wonder. 
So it's less about receiving a cosmic fax with all the answers and more about learning to read the language of the universe for ourselves. Exactly. And that journey of discovery, that ongoing process of learning and questioning, that's where the true value lies. It's about becoming more than just passive observers of reality. Right. But active participants in the evolution of consciousness itself. I'm starting to understand. It's not just about having these mind-blowing experiences. It's about what we do with those experiences afterward. Right. It's about integrating those insights into our everyday lives and allowing them to shape how we interact with the world. Precisely. And this is where McKenna's ideas, while often, you know, radical and challenging, right. they echo the wisdom of various spiritual and contemplative traditions. He talked about the need to exteriorize the soul. Now, that might sound a bit esoteric, sure. but it aligns with practices like meditation and mindfulness, okay. which aim to cultivate a sense of self-awareness and presence. So it's about bridging that gap between our inner and outer worlds, between yeah. the subjective experiences we have and the objective reality we perceive perceive around us. Exactly. If we can cultivate that kind of awareness, that connection to something larger than ourselves, right. perhaps we can begin to play a more conscious role in shaping our own evolution, both individually and as a species. It's a lot to consider. We've covered a lot of ground in this deep dive. Yeah. Altered states of consciousness, the evolution of humanity, the nature of reality, even the possibility of extraterrestrial intelligence. If there's one thing I'm taking away from all of this, it's that the boundaries of reality are far more fluid and mysterious than we often give them credit for. Absolutely. And as we continue to explore these mysteries, both through scientific inquiry and through direct experience, right. we may find that the answers we seek have been here all along, hidden in plain sight, waiting for us to develop the tools and the awareness to finally perceive them. Well said. And on that note, we'll leave you to ponder these mysteries for yourself. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep diving deep into the unknown.